Hey, what is going on guys? You're watching Matt the Musketeer and this is my first full feature length video about Medal of Honor Warfighter and my first full feature length video on my new channel, so um, that's pretty cool. Now this gameplay here is from last night when the game came out in the UK on the 26th. Now I think the game came out a couple of days earlier in America, which is kind of a shame. I think it's a bit dated now for companies to bring out games at different release dates. It seems a bit of a, you know, a dated thing to do. But either way, it came out last night in the UK or it came out yesterday in the UK even. But I got a chance to play it last night after coming back from work. But obviously with the launch of my new channel, it's been hard to get time to, um, you know, fit some serious gameplay time in. But I've managed to still play about two or three hours. So um, this gameplay here, I've left it in the full feature. I've not cut anything out of it. So you can see all the little um, glitches and uh, weird things going on just as you saw just then. And also for a lot of you guys who haven't bought the game yet, I thought I'd leave in all the kind of between um, spawn menus and stuff just so you can get a real glimpse of what the, uh, the game really looks like. So this is an unedited down gameplay. Now this map I think is called uh, Sarajevo Stadium. I think that's the name of it. And it's um it's quite a good map. I've used this gameplay because um I don't even do that particularly well, but it's one of my very first games. So I thought I'd show it to you guys. I really like this map. It's just very, very basic. You've got uh, the stadium and you've got kind of two sides of the stadium above the seats. This side I'm in here and the opposite side. And then in the bottom of the stadium, you've got a lot of burnt out trucks and crates and, you know, creating lots of different obstacles in the middle. It kind of almost like a small paintball arena. So that's pretty cool. So I really do like this map. Now, when the game came out, I think there's about eight maps in total you can play on. And I think I've played through all of them now. I've mainly been playing Team Deathmatch to get a, um, a sense of the map. But not only that, the kind of dynamics of the game and stuff. Now, obviously, this is on PC. Now, this gameplay here is on high settings on PC. I can play on Ultra, but I've been playing on high so I can get a better frame rate. But um, to be honest, especially when you're watching it on YouTube, the difference between Ultra and High is um, you know, almost impossible to see. So for anyone who's been wondering what it looks like, this is what the game looks like in almost you know, best graphics possible. This is with everything set to high. And it still looks pretty good. It doesn't look anywhere near as good as Battlefield 3. I will say that now, but you know, what can you expect from a much smaller company? Now, as I've managed to play about three or four hours of online time now, I thought it was about time I came across you guys and talked about my first thoughts of the game. Now, as I just touched on, the graphics aren't quite Battlefield 3, but at the same time, they're not too bad. The high level detail close up is quite convincing, but there are some quite interesting ragdoll effects as you're about to see here. When you get killed, your body sometimes flops around and gets stuck and twitches and flies about all over the place, which isn't really a complaint, it's just more of a, a funny noticeable thing I've seen within the game. But overall, the character models themselves, their faces, their clothes, their equipment looks quite convincing as you can see on the figure on the left hand side of the screen there. But so far, I must admit, I don't think the Frostbite 2 engine is being used to its full potential at all. Now, when the Medal of Honor series restarted in 2010, it had something called Micro Destruction. Now, obviously, that game used the Frostbite 1 engine, which was the same engine that the latest Battlefield at the time was using, Bad Company 2. Now, Bad Company 2 had whole buildings that could be destroyed. Now, obviously, Medal of Honor wasn't going for that kind of tactic with a much smaller base and map sizes, so they had something called Micro Destruction, where you could destroy the cover the enemy was hiding behind and force them to move. But so far in this game, I'm yet to see anything like that. In fact, this game is lacking some of the things that you've really come to expect from every modern day first person shooter. Like the ability to shoot people through thin materials like wood, canvas and bamboo. In fact, I was playing a map yesterday that was entirely made of wooden structures and bamboo fences. And I knew for sure that there was an enemy behind a bamboo fence because I could see his red silhouette as he had just killed my fire team member. Now for people who don't know, when you're in your two-man fire teams, if your teammate is killed by the enemy, for a short period of time, that enemy has a red silhouette around him, which can be seen through walls, so you can go out and seek revenge. So I could see this red silhouette, so I knew 100% that there was an enemy behind this bamboo fence, yet m none of my bullets or grenades would destroy the fence or go through it. So that kind of threw me off a little bit and surprised me that you couldn't shoot through these things, which is kind of thing you can do on most or any first-person shooter these days. Now, being a brand new game, there are a lot of glitches and things that are happening as you play online, but I'm not going to really complain about those because they're the kind of things that get smoothed out as the game is released. Let's all remember back to when Battlefield 3 first came out. That wasn't exactly the smoothest of experiences when that first game came out. So I'm not going to hate on the game for having some glitches and stuff, but I will warn you that if you get this game, you will have to be patient with it because there is a lot of glitches. As you saw at the start of the game there, on several occasions I've spawned just in the midst of nowhere just to float out of the map and then die and sometimes I've actually spawned outside the map to a point where I could actually shoot into the map and kill people but I was trapped behind some kind of chain link fence outside of the map which kind of uh, surprised me a little bit. So there are a few glitches with it but as I said I won't go and, and hate on the game just yet. I'll just warn you that if you're going to buy this game you need to be patient with it and there is you know some problems that need to be ironed out and I'm sure the team at Danger Close will get that sorted in no time so I'm not going to hate onto that. Now one thing I am going to warn you guys about which I've seen a lot of people complaining about already is the confusing menus. Now the menus are very very confusing and not only that the system on which the multiplayer works 
to me, is still a little bit puzzling. When you first joined the, the multiplayer, it asked me, what country do I want to fight for? So obviously, being English, I picked the SAS. I therefore thought that, depending on what class I picked, if I was going to be a sniper, it would make me a British SAS sniper, or if it was going to be assault, it would make me an SAS assault. But it doesn't seem to work like that. Depending on what class you pick, it picks a different country for that class to make you play as. But not only that, it'll change and vary depending on what map you're on. For example, if I was on this map and I picked to use an assault class, it might make me an American assault class user. But on the next map, if I picked assault, I might be a Swedish assault. So, so far it's quite confusing the way the system of the game works and it's quite puzzling why it even asked me what country I wanted to be in the first place. So that's still a little bit confusing to me. Now I am going to do a video talking about this in more detail, but so far my favourite class and weapons has got to be the Assault class, or the Swedish Assault class, SOG. And I think to start off with that has the AK-5C and a secondary of a shotgun, which so far I think is a really, really cool mix of kit. Quite a long range, accurate weapon, which special ability is high powered rounds, and then a shotgun for second weapon for close range, so that's pretty cool. Now another thing with the menus is they're very slow and clunky, and this is because Everything you pick on the online menus has been pretty much done with an animation to it. So if you were to go ahead and try and change the setup of your weapon and change the paint job, you'd actually see him put the gun on the table and you see him moving the gun around and changing bits on the end of it, which is all very interesting and cool that the team have gone ahead and, you know, tried to add this kind of really in-depth animation and kind of real-world situation to the, uh, the menus. But it does make things very slow and clunky, especially when you're in the middle of an online game and you're trying to change something on your scope and you're watching him put the gun on the table and do all this kind of stuff. It can make things very slow. Or, for example, when you're trying to change character, rather than just having a list of characters, you see all the characters stood there and they're all shuffling around and moving. And, you know, there's a lot of animation involved, which is, you know, respect to the team for doing that. But it does make things quite slow and clunky rather than just having a very simple, you know, very smooth, quick-moving menu. Now, so far, I have mainly been playing Team Deathmatch, as you can see here. But there is a new game mode called Home Run, which I've been playing and quite enjoying. It's pretty much captured the flag where two teams, one defending and one attacking. One goes out and tries to collect two flags and brings them back to its spawn point. And everybody only has one life and has to wait to respawn in the next round. And I've got some good gameplay of that or some interesting gameplay of that. So I might upload that later on today if you want to see that. So stay tuned for that, guys. In the meantime, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please like it and give me a comment. I'm trying to get my new channel up there. So every like and comment really helps me a lot. So in the meantime, guys, thank you for watching. Stay tuned and I will see you soon.